With the year coming to an end, I wanted to put together this special video. Since this year was the most effort I put into YouTube, I wanted to end this year with a special video. So today, I'll be counting down my top 10 favorite video games of all time. Now these are my personal opinions, and few are based on nostalgia and memories I have of these games. Also, I try to make this spoiler free for anyone who wants to play these games. But with that being said, let's get straight into the video. My top 10 favorite video games of all time. Call of Duty Black Ops 2, a game that everyone, and I mean everyone, had back in the day. It was one of the best experiences gamers had on the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. First, let's talk about the story. This game's story is the best Call of Duty story ever made, next to Modern Warfare, and the fact that they continue it from Black Ops 1 is truly amazing. It also had the option that gamers can make their own choices in certain moments of the game and how it would impact their own experiences and have their own ending. This game's story was really well written, and I loved the futuristic aspect the game had to offer in its combat. One of my favorite moments is where in one mission, enemies were camouflaged in a dark, rainy forest, and you would either have to shoot the place up or sneak up stealthily with your buddies. One of my favorite things in the campaign is the voice acting, because this game's acting performance is really underrated, and I wish people would appreciate it more often. Right fucking there, I should have known. Like, right then and there. I should have known right then and there. Like, what the fuck is wrong with me? The fuck? Now, let's talk about the rivers in this game's on the list. Multiplayer and Zombies Multiplayer and Zombies were the prime time of gaming while I grew up. The amount of friends I made on Search and Destroy and Zombies were awesome to me, because even though these people were a thousand miles away from me, we would become best friends in an instant. Team Deathmatch was the mode I mostly played on and would hop on after a long day of school and spend most of my holiday break on. Zombies would forever be my favorite thing about Black Ops games, because the amount of fun within the community was so wholesome to me. I love horror, and the atmosphere of being alone in a scary room with the creepy ambiance is cool to me. Having fun watching tips and tricks on YouTube was truly a nostalgic experience. And playing zombies with friends on Black Ops 2 on trans shit, <coughs> transit and die rise was so fun to me, because I can never experience that again. But since all the games are now on Game Pass, now teens and kids can grow up having these experiences, and I can. I really miss that feeling. Red Dead Redemption 2 Red Dead Redemption 2 is a masterpiece through and through. This game has shaped gamers and introduced them to a beautiful single player experience. The amount of content in this game is insane. This game being my number 9 is probably going to get a lot of people mad, since many people consider this game as their number 1, and I understand that. Arthur Morgan is one of, if not the best video game protagonist of all time, alongside Kratos and Nathan Drake. This game's story is about the Dutch Vandalin gang before the first Red Dead Redemption game, and it's incredible how Rockstar Games were able to make a prequel to one of their best games and make the story make sense. One of the best aspects in this game is the exploration of the wild wild west and being a cowboy. I had so much fun exploring the world of Red Dead with my horse, doing side quests like finding cravings, looking for dead body parts, and shooting some folks were definitely memorable moments for me in my life. Finding gold weapons and hunting animals were really fun, and doing both game stuff was really worth it since you can explore an area in the certain part of the game that you can't before the epilogue. The experience of this game is truly amazing, and having these graphics were so insane back in 2018. The winter break where I played this game was nothing short of amazing. The whole break I just played Red Dead 2 and would not get on with my friends because Red Dead 2 was that game for me. I always loved the western movies. As a matter of fact, Django Unchained is my favorite movie of all time, but that's another video for another time. The Wild Wild West just seems fun to me because the chaos people were doing during that time. But enough has been said about this game on YouTube and everywhere else, so let's get to the next game. Grand Theft Auto 4 Yup, another Rockstar Games masterpiece, Grand Theft Auto 4. This game came out in 2008, and I was like what, 2 years old when this game came out? I was able to play it around 8 and 9, because I had older brothers at the house and they owned an Xbox 360 and had GTA 4. And whenever they played it, I would always ask, can I play, can I play? And yes, I was that younger brother. And they would only let me play missions where driving was required and would have to take the controller back when some action were about to happen. But when they weren't at the house, I would play the whole game and would honestly learn some dark stuff from the game. Complicated. I... I never thought I'd live like this. No? When the war came, I did bad things. And after the war, I thought nothing of doing bad things. I killed people, smuggled people, sold people. And you don't worry about your soul? After you walk into a village, and you see 50 children, all sitting neatly in a row against the church wall, each with their throats cut and their hands chopped off, 
you realize that the creature that could do this doesn't have a soul. The terror of war and being independent and fighting the American dream were topics I found interesting and learned so much things in the game that school couldn't, like a good friendship, trusting people, and what it means to be human. This game's story, in my opinion, is the best in any GTA game. I'm very much excited for the next installment that Rockstar is cooking up for GTA 6 for its story. The setting of a fictional take on New York is always cool to me, and I love exploring Times Square while free roaming, because it's so cool to see with my young eyes and seeing a whole world within a disc and a console. I 100% recommend this game to everyone, because this game is so well written that it makes it realistic and dark. This game makes you so immersed with these characters and story that we can't forget the funny and comedic scenes with Rockstar Stark's humor. The combat within shooting is really fun while doing missions, and I love how Rockstar lets you use any weapon anytime in action missions. As a matter of fact, this game makes Metacritic's top 5 video games of all time, and that's saying something. It honestly saddens me that GTA 4 is not on PS4 or PS5, but only on Xbox and PC. But trust me, when this game goes on sale for 5 bucks on Steam, please buy this game. You guys would not regret it. Shadow of the Colossus Shadow of the Colossus was released on the PlayStation 2 on October 15, 2005, which was the year I was born. And obviously, I didn't play the game, I was only 1 years old, and didn't get my hands on it until I entered middle school and bought a copy on eBay. Since one of my favorite YouTubers, Jacks Up the Guy, says this is his favorite game, I was so interested in the box cover of the game with the huge monster leaning over the main character. When I played this game, the story was very interesting, since you don't really know what's going on at first because all you see is Wander, the person you play as carrying a girl to an off-limits land to bring her back to her health, while a voice on the roof is telling you what tasks you should do. One of the reasons why this game is on my list is because of the nature of this game has in store for the player. The main task for you is to kill 16 colossi to help the girl bring back to her health, and that's it. That's the whole game. The whole game is basically a boss rush, and that's why this game is special in a lot of ways. Climbing huge creatures and stabbing the weak points with the intense music playing in the background was so badass. The best part in the game for me is the setting, so you can just go around with your horse aggro and find each colossi within the huge map. Exploration was the main reason this game's up here, because I find secrets and areas with beautiful visuals and witness a world that was calm and relaxing. I really want to make a video about this game someday, with the story and lore, but that's for another day. Final Fantasy VII and Final Fantasy VII Remake I know having these two games on one spot is cheating, but since the original game and remake both hit the same feeling towards me. But anyways, FF7 was the first ever JRPG game I ever played back on the PlayStation 1 while I still had it. But I know many, many gamers have said this already, but Final Fantasy 7 really is a masterpiece of story, gameplay, and everything else this game has to offer. Just experiencing this game and watching these characters interact with each other felt like a movie to me. Cloud is honestly in my top 3 video game characters of all time because of his story arc and how he overcomes his depression and independence with his friends and experiencing loss. My favorite thing about this game is honestly the music, because music in video games is such an important factor to me because it gives me a sense of nostalgia hearing these beautiful pieces. I always loved the fantasy genre and medieval aspects, but the way FF7 uses it feels very modern and I love that about the game. And watching these things get nailed perfectly within the remake was awesome to relive my love for this game. I love how the remake uses different and unique music with Hollow Skies for an area and Hollow as the game's main theme. What I really appreciate about both games is the dynamic relationship between Cloud and Sephiroth. Watching Cloud and Sephiroth in scenes of the remake were awesome to witness since these two are one of the same but with different motives and different goals. It's for sure a fun experience to witness the story and characters while you play and I can't wait for Final Fantasy Reaper when it comes out in February. Bloodborne. Bloodborne was in fact my first ever From Software game, and I didn't know it was a Souls game until the middle of my playthrough. But let's get that out of the way. This game has fully had me in a different world, because my favorite genre is psychological horror, and Bloodborne is that. It's gothic and the Victorian style is really cool to me. I would even call this game a near almost 100% perfect game, and is now one of my most revisited games to play. This game's mechanics are so cool and makes sense for a Souls game. Like we can transform your weapon to do more damage but swing slower, while in normal state the swings are faster but damage is lower. But when you swing and transform the weapon, the attack deals hella damage. The weapons and armor in this game are one of my favorites in any media. I mean, look at the Hunter set and Ashen set. You can't tell me these don't look good. This game setting is one of the best settings in video game history. Just walking around Yarnum and talking to NPCs and looking at the beautiful castles and amazing art style of the locations. The amount of times I just walked around and took so many screenshots in this game is insane. The bosses are one of the best bosses to date, like Lady Maria, Orphan of Cause, and Ludwig. And the music, oh the music. If you've ever seen a Bloodborne video, someone has to mention the music. Like, I mean, come on, look at this.
all along. This game means a lot to me, and that's the reason it's on this list, because the amount of fun I had and the lore of this game is so complex and dark that I fell in love with it. Whenever I revisit this game, I fight all the bosses, because they are that good and I admire their wonderful music. I love to come back to this game every once in a while, and I don't regret it. The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time I mean, what more can I say about this game? It's literally in Metacritic's number one spot of best video games of all time. And I don't disagree one bit. This game has that magic that all Nintendo games have. The gameplay can be slow and annoying at times, but the story and puzzles make up for that. Link going out on Hyrule Field with Epona will forever be one of the most memorable moments in my life. Because how comforting this game is for me, and for a lot of people. My favorite moment is definitely the ending, but since this is spoiler free, I can't say much about it. But if you haven't tried a Zelda game, please start or play Ocarina of Time, because you have one of the best experiences of a game. The amount of fans this game has is truly something else because the amount of passion has been brought to fan-made games, speedruns, and so many games that inspired it till this day. I wish I could say more about this game, but just know, this game means so much to me personally, and I don't regret having this game in my top 5, because how it impacted me as a Zelda fan. And watching the end credits with that beautiful music never fails to make me cry. Super Mario 64, the first video game I have ever played, and it was my number one for a while until the other two came out of my youth. Back in elementary school, I would play this game every single day of my life, and was obsessed with this game in the Mario series, which has become one of my favorite franchises. This game just has that magic to it. It means so much to me and to a lot of other people. This game made me love 3D platformers. Every level in this game is iconic and fun to just roam around in. I did both the N64 and 3DS remake, and 100% them, and had so much fun. Each star in both games are a blast to complete, it was very rewarding seeing Mario throw a peace sign at the player. Even when I finish the game, I always come back every once in a while and just have more fun. This was the first ever Mario game and made me fall in love with Nintendo as a whole and all the Mario games. It made my childhood so much fun that I honestly miss it. My favorite levels are Dario Dario Dachshun, Jolly Roger Bay, and Tall Tall Mountain. Mostly because of the music, because it gives me a warm feeling and comfort whenever I hear those notes. The amount of knowledge I know of this game is honestly concerning, since I remember all the secrets, and rumors, and facts about the game and the amount of passion people like me have for this game is truly something special that Nintendo and Miyamoto made for us. I actively speedrun this game when I'm bored and have never made it to the top 50 runners on speedrun.com, but that just tells you how much this game means to me and to millions of other people out there. Super Mario 64 is more than a game, it's a feeling and that feeling makes me happy just to roam around the castle walls and just listen. Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi 3 one of the best PlayStation 2 games and my second favorite game of all time. When I was 6 years old, my first anime was Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. And for a long time, Dragon Ball Z was my favorite anime. But that's another video I would like to make later on this channel. But back to the game. This is the best fighting game ever made in my opinion. Because the amount of love and competitiveness in this game that I'm so excited for Sparking Zero when it comes out next year. The amount of characters in this game is incredible. And one of the many reasons these Dragon Ball games exist and why people play them. I mean, you can play as General Blue from Dragon Ball. You can play as Chi Chi. This game has almost every character from Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, and GT. I love how in this fighting game you can choose what styles you prefer, like a huge brute or monster that attacks slow but is incredibly tanky, or a fast punching machine but weak attacks, or just a balanced character. 
The story mode is really fun, so you can fight battles from the anime and even movies, like Legendary Super Saiyan Broly and Fusion Reborn. The music in this game is perfect for a fighting game, like Meteor Shower and Innocent World being one of my favorite songs ever made. And by remembering the times I would go into character modes for everyone and just look at their outfits and just listen in my room. My favorite character would be Teen Gohan, since he's my favorite character in the show and how fast he is in the game. This game has shaped my childhood, alongside Super Mario 64 and San Andreas, being the first few games I ever played while playing young. This game is very nostalgic for me, and playing a game from one of my favorite shows is very heartwarming. And for that, it deserves the number 2 spot. Before we go on to the number 1 spot, I want to give some honorable mentions, since these games deserve to be on this list, but were beaten on personal preferences and memories. Devil May Cry 3, Dante's Awakening, Resident Evil 4, Chrono Trigger, Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater, and The Last of Us Part 1. And for the number 11 spot is Super Mario Odyssey. Since that game changed 3D Mario for years and how incredibly fun that game is to boot up and play. Doing tricks with Cappy and exploring 10 out of 10 levels really shows how Nintendo never misses with a Mario game. And that first playthrough hits me and how that game still holds up to this day. I've said this before, but if you haven't guessed by now, I don't know what to tell you. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild I mentioned this before in my Zelda video from a few months ago, but this game has been my number one favorite game ever since that summer of 2018 when I first picked this game up. I even had my first playthrough of this game in the channel, when I first played it at 9 o'clock in the morning. I can't even explain how I love this game in this short video. I thought of making a 2 hour Breath of the Wild retrospective on YouTube, but so many people have made hundreds of videos on it already, but maybe someday I'll make it. Going around Hyrule in an open world style is so fun for me since I love open world games like others in this list. I spent around 250 hours in this game and I never get bored of it. Fighting some blue goblins and lionels were really fun to do, and I would even challenge myself like beating them with only bombs or no hit fights. Like I said before, exploration is something I love in video games, like exploring the land of Hyrule is truly something amazing. Like recently, I played some Breath of the Wild and found some landmarks that I didn't even get to find in my other playthroughs. And remember, I have 250 hours in this game, I know a lot of people say that the story is not that great, but to me, it's a 10 out of 10 because how Nintendo made us fall in love with these characters and made them a huge part of the story. I have so many favorite areas in this game that I can't even name them all, but here are a few. Zoro's Domain, Satori Mountain, and Kagariko Village. I love walking around and chilling with the beautiful music in the background. Speaking of the music, the music in this game has inspired me to learn more about music in video games and how video game music is important to me and how that music can make us feel. Link and Zelda's relationship in this game is one of the best relationships in the series, and I love how the story revolves around them. The combat is very simple, but with the mechanics of the game, you can make it look so badass because of how Nintendo made this game so realistic. Like you can make your own fireplace and rest for a couple hours to make progress within a quest or just want to explore during the day. The outfits in the game are one of my favorite things because of how they can improve Link's movement and status, like climbing gear and fighting gear. There are so many things to do in this game and how Nintendo was able to expand with their sequel is truly unreal. One of my favorite moments within this game is doing a dungeon within the Gerudo Desert and fighting the boss within that dungeon. Because that fight is very memorable because of how the combat works in this game. I still haven't mentioned all the other great things in this game, like the villages and NPCs that make this game even more great. But to make it short, this game has impacted me in more ways than any other game in this list. And how this game has shaped me as a person and my life. It really speaks for itself. But anyways, that's it for the video. I know I didn't do a great explanation for these games, but I try my best to express my feelings as much as possible. This year means a lot to me, because so many great games came out this year, and how this year was the most effort I ever put into the channel, and how I never realized how much I love editing and making videos. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I would very much appreciate it if you liked, comment, and subscribed. Have a wonderful day, and happy holidays. Bye.